Item number SCP-1867 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-1867 is to be kept in a 40 x 70 x 30 cm aquatic specimen tank. No additional security measures are necessary. SCP-1867's environment and the care thereof are identical to that of non-anomalous members of the species. Recovered items relating to SCP-1867 are to be placed in Secure Storage Vault 16. Access to these items and to SCP-1867 itself is with permission of an appropriate Level 2 staff member. 2012, SCP-1867 has requested access to a selection of novels and nature journals. Request was denied. Description: SCP-1867 is a neuter branch of the species Nembrotha cubraniana, variable neon slug, measuring 11.7 cm or 4.6 inches in length. There are no physical differences between SCP-1867 and any other members of its species. SCP-1867 is sapient and capable of telepathic communication with individuals within 5 meters. It identifies itself as Lord Theodore Thomas Blackwood, a British explorer and naturalist. No such individual appears in any municipal records. SCP-1867 speaks with terminology and style appropriate to late 19th century England and is generally friendly and cooperative with researchers. SCP-1867 makes repeated claims of past exploits and accomplishments, including service in the Second Opium War, expeditions to remote regions of the world, and encounters with various rare creatures and peoples. Despite the questionable validity of Mimus' claims, SCP-1867 has shown in-depth knowledge of geography, zoology, botany, archaeology, anthropology, and linguistics relating to its claimed regions of exploration, as well as more esoteric fields such as obscure mythology, mysticism, and cryptozoology. However, SCP-1867 does not seem to realize or willfully ignores any events or information dating after approximately 1910. When requested to give proof of its exploits, SCP-1867 provided an address near England, claiming that it would be more than willing to donate its collection. Investigation of the address led to a cottage owned by one Miss who claimed to be keeping the house for Lord Blackwood. Further questioning failed to reveal any details of SCP-1867 nature or origins beyond what information SCP-1867 had already provided. Miss died of heart failure five days after Foundation agents began investigations. Investigation of the cottage revealed an underground vault containing over 3,000 artifacts, zoological and botanical specimens, a library containing over 5,000 items, and a functioning, if outdated, laboratory. All materials within the collection were removed and relocated by the Foundation over the course of three weeks. Addendum 01 a full listing of items recovered from SCP-1867's collection may be found in Document 1867-VL. Items of particular note include 116 unknown species of plants, 107 unknown species of insects, 28 unknown species of lizards, 23 unknown species of fish, 14 unknown species of amphibians, 12 unknown species of mammals, fossils pertaining to 8 unknown species of dinosaur, Fossils pertaining to 12 unknown species of prehistoric mammal, artifacts belonging to 29 unknown indigenous societies, 35 handwritten journals containing records of events described by SCP-1867. The accounts are generally identical, save some slight variations and exaggerations on the part of SCP-1867 in retelling, and have been dated to the appropriate time period of the events described. 20 kg of processed opium collection of firearms of make and model not correlating with any known manufacturers, including three wideboard muskets marked as Dr. B.T. Moss Effective Particle Destabilizers. These items are non-functional. Detailed globes of Mercury, Venus, Mars, and the Galilean moons, accompanied by notes detailing possible paths of surface exploration. A heavily modified carriage containing instruments of unknown purpose. A note attached to the door reads, On the Fritz, Speak with Henry, in handwriting matching that of the journals. Four agents were killed after activation before the object was destroyed. When questioned about the item, SCP-1867's response was, I did warn you to be careful around my collection. That bloody thing nearly took my head off back at Woking in 97 when I found it. Addendum 02 The following interview is dated 0845 2012 Dr. Good morning, 1867. 
Ah, good morning, Doctor. Wonderful to see you. Come in, come in, have yourself a seat. Now, if I remember correctly, the last time you were here I was telling you about the time I was captured by the Ubula tribe of the Congo. Actually, I had some questions about your story. You see, no such tribe exists. Of course not. There weren't any of the Ubula left if the village was attacked by Mokele Mbembe. I still regret not being able to back that monster when I had the chance. It is a persistently elusive creature. 1867. We have no actual proof that what you are saying is not just an elaborate fiction. The artifacts and records we found in your vault could easily be fakes. Nonsense. I would never fabricate any of my work. Why, it's against the very heart of being a naturalist. While I am repeatedly amazed by your institution here, you seem to be missing the explorer's spirit. When I scaled the Himalayas in search of the monks of the Golden Mountain, did I worry about what others had said about them? Of course not. I went and found out for myself. You do realize that you're a sea slug, right? Good heavens, boy, have you been drinking? That's utterly ridiculous. If you can't be bothered to be sensible, I have no reason to speak with you. Go get yourself a nice cup of tea and sober up.